Hello there, everyone. It's good to see you again. This is Unit 2 of Animal Science, where we're going to talk about uh, poultry, egg, and milk products. And this is mini lecture one. Uh, we'll divide this into two segments to make it for a little bit easier listening. In chapter four here, that corresponds to your textbook, uh, we're going to talk quickly about poultry and egg products. So let's get to our content here. Poultry consumption in terms of meat specifically is about 100 pounds of turkey and chicken per year on a per capita basis. And it's really, really grown. Uh, your lifetime really doesn't recognize how much uh, poultry uh, consumption in terms of meat product has grown significantly over the last, say, uh, half century or so. It's very inexpensive and, of course, is marketed as a healthier, low-fat product. Eggs, right now in the U.S., we look at about 254 eggs uh, per capita consumption per year. About 70% of those are shell eggs, and the rest of it is as processed, where you might have a, you know omelet prepared on a sandwich that you bought in fast food or something of that nature. The export market, when we talk about poultry marketing, about $2.1 billion in broilers, 62 million cases of eggs, at about $38 million a year, and about another $123 million in processed eggs. All of them must be inspected for safety, and about two-thirds of all eggs sold are graded uh, for quality. Of course, then there's a whole lot of labeling uh, magic that goes on on your label. Um, you know, about 1%, if they're labeled free range, it's only about 1% of the operations that are outside the pen. It's actually a very, very low fraction in order to be allowed to be labeled as free range. Uh, natural is minimal processing, no added ingredients. Um, and pretty much everything meets this guideline, actually. So the, the use of natural on a label is, is uh, quite liberal, so to speak. Of course, once you get to, in a, in, uh, get to organic, then you must certify in order to sell it as certified organic. It is no antibiotics, no pesticides, and, and also must use organically grown feedstuffs if you want to put that organic label on there. Hormone free would say would suggest no artificial or added hormones. I think that one is a little bit problematic here because it's very difficult to prove. Antibiotic um, free would then be classified as no antibiotics for treatment or prevention used. I find this also very difficult because how do producers um, treat animals that could on occasion get sick? And if they do, uh, what do they do with them if they're going to try and be marketing their animals as antibiotic free? Uh, you know, do they just uh, terminate those that are ill in order to keep their antibiotic free status or are they separating culling those out and marketing those differently, which is what I suspect is probably happening. And then fresh product uh, is chilled to less than 24 degrees Fahrenheit quickly. Or not chilled, excuse me. So eggs and weights, when we talk about broilers or roasters or things of that nature, give you a little grid so you can kind of separate those out. And the typical dressing percentages of each, and those have risen drastically over time. So we're getting more efficient at growing our poultry. Here's a cross-section of an egg just to kind of give you the features and uh, anatomy of an egg and what it looks like. The retail parts and cooked edible meat of a broiler uh, fryer chicken, so the breast all the way down to the giblets, uh, what percent of the, of the carcass it is, and what percent edible it is. Kind of interesting to know what you can utilize there. Here is a chart that shows per capita consumption, retail weight on an annual basis, and obviously uh, chicken far, far outpaces turkey. And you know this chart only goes back to 1995. But I would submit to you when you get back into the 30s, 40s, and 50s, about the only turkey that was ever consumed was only around the holidays at uh, Christmas and Thanksgiving time. Uh, turkey was not hardly even available whenever I was a kid as a, um, as a cut of meat uh, or cold cuts uh, for a sandwich, uh, even whenever I was a kid um, growing up. So those have grown dramatically over time and, and of course taken quite a bite out of the other meat products that, you'll, that it competes with. Per capita egg consumption, again, you get about a 40-year historical look here of, of a shell versus processed eggs. So how are broilers marketed in retail grocery stores? 
So if you go back to 1970, about 70% of all broilers were, wrote, uh, were marketed as whole broilers, and only a quarter of them were marketed uh, cut up into retail cuts. Today now, only about 11%. That number has dropped uh, dra dramatically to whole broilers in terms of sold. Most of them are cut or further processed uh, into smaller things like chicken nuggets. As we look at broiler exports as a percentage of production, notice that number has been relatively high, uh, maintained basically above 15% since about 1995. Huge part of their industry. All right, it's always interesting to talk about who the big players are, and this slide does just that, uh, talking about who the, who the big ones are. And Tyson, uh, at least in, at the writing of this text, tends to lead the way in average weekly production and million pounds of ready uh, ready to cook poultry, uh, all the way down to Sanderson, which is uh, not as widely known to label, especially around here. All right, we're going to pause this section, rather quick uh, introductory section where we focus primarily on poultry. I uh, want you to tidy up your notes, write any questions that you may have for clarification for your muddiest points, and we will prepare, prepare for the next segment. Thanks for tuning in.